Hello guys, welcome to the Intellectual Property Entry Nexus Podcast. Welcome to IP Entry Nexus Podcast. Let me check out our Facebook screen and see if we are on course. So I've been away for some time. Our last episode, we had some emergency obligations, so we never fell through our obligation to you guys. But we are here today with the Intellectual Property and Tree Nexus podcast, another episode, another edition. And today we will be uh, looking at visual arts and copyrights. Visual arts and copyrights is our topic for the day. So let me check all our audio and see how the audio is. Yeah, the audio is great, so we would like to take it down to here. Audio and the visual are both great. Both the audio and the visual are great. So welcome guys, wherever you are following us from, we are glad to have you for another episode of the Intellectual Property and Tree Nexus podcast. So... Uh, today happens to be uh, our topic for today happens to be visual arts and copyright so we want to look into how uh, copyright protection provides uh, provides a level of uh, a level of protection against any infringement and in copyright violations from your competitors uh, those interested in engaging in whether duplication or unauthorized pro- production of your work as an original arts of visual arts uh, work originator. So we want to look at visual arts, visual art. When we speak to visual arts, what comes to mind is that basically we are referring to arts or type of arts that are that deals with uh, production that are appreciated by sight as opposed to uh, literature or musical works. So visual arts is arts that are known to be appreciated by seeing them uh, by sight, but they, they, they being available and they being appreciated by your ability to see them visually. So these are acts that we are referring to. And basically they are paintings, uh, paintings, sculpture, uh, films, uh, engravings, uh, acts that are available at various museums, acts that are on display at various galleries. So these are what we refer to as visual arts, as that are basically can be appreciated, can be valued, can be recognized 
by the R. And they are all very, very separate from other arts that we are aware of, uh, arts like literary arts, uh, like books, like literary works, like music as well. Uh, the differentiation from these other arts works as compared to visual arts, in order for you to appreciate the essence and the value that visual arts brings, you have to see them, you have to uh, just appreciate the beauty or uh, the design of whatsoever paintings, uh, whatsoever sculpture, a uh, typical example for sculptures within the African society, particularly the Liberian society, we have artworks, uh, art and crafts. We have uh, the different type of of, of craft works, uh, be it sculpture in a way of a devil, of various designs that we are aware of. Take for example, you go to my bound point where most of our visitors and foreigners and Liberians alike uh, sometimes go to purchase artworks. So you go up my bound point uh, around uh, forgetting the name of the hotel, but opposite that hotel, there's a there's a art work uh, shops that are in line and where you can appreciate the essence of those crafts and artworks as well as have the opportunity to purchase them. So we have favorite arts works that can that falls under the category of visual arts. So visual arts that are artworks that are appreciated by seeing them, by viewing them, by having uh, to go to a specific gallery, maybe you are invited to a gallery and there's an opening of that gallery, someone invited you and you go there to appreciate the author or the artist that was able to put on exhibit the viral uh, artworks that that gallery possess. So it's also similar to artworks that are available in museums. You visit uh, regular museums, you will see uh, viral paintings, you will see viral pictures, you will see viral designs. So these are all artworks. So when we speak about visual arts, we are referring to those artworks that are specifically distinct from uh, literary works or musical works. Musical work, musical work can be appreciated by hearing, you know, literary works, you can appreciate them by reading, uh, but as opposed to musical and literary works, visual arts uh, is basically focused on arts works that are appreciated by seeing. So that is it. That is what visual arts are. And we will, as we proceed in today's episode, we discuss how visual arts can be protected under copyrights. As an artist engaged in the production of visual arts or as an author engaged uh, in the production of visual arts as a sculpture, as a painter, whatsoever category you are from and you are engaged in the process of visual arts, you can be protected on a copyright. 
and this is what we are going to cover for today's topic so we spoke about visual as such as paintings uh, sculptures uh, films uh, engravings acts available in the museums acts that are available at uh, exhibitions at a gallery these are all arts that we are referring to as visual arts so we a visual arts can also fall in the category of commercial arts so a visual arts that is seen but it has a commercial implication that that artwork when you see it uh be it in a magazine be it on a television or wheresoever is available the intent is to trigger you as a consumer or as a passerby that the final intent of that artwork is to ensure that you can be moved to purchase a specific product or service so visual arts uh, artwork also commercial arts falls also under the category of visual arts so commercial art is used to uh, promote uh, products and services that are protectable on a copyright so that's the intent of uh, commercial art which also falls on our visual arts then we also uh, that another artwork that falls on a visual art is uh, decorative arts uh, as the name implies or as it, the, the name is self-explanatory deals with uh, artworks that uh, deals with uh, different varieties of decorations or ornaments and these uh, decorations or ornaments be a uh, display internally maybe in a building uh, maybe at a university at a public or private building these decorative uh, designs and artworks are also protected on a copyright uh, with certain limits uh, there are specific portions of these uh, decorative artworks uh, uh, that can be protected on a cut uh, on a copyright protection though so it's not a blanket protection for decorative artworks but there are certain uh, categories of decorative artworks that can force on the protection of copyright so that's these are basically certain uh, tips of uh, artworks that can be captured on a visual arts so similarly to music uh, movies books that also have stronger protection on a copyright uh, is basically to ensure that to in order to avoid mass production of if you are a musician or a musician your music or if you are an actor or you are a producer of a movie in order to avoid mass production or if you are a writer to avoid an unauthorized mass reproduction of your movies your books your music it has there's a stronger protection on a copyright to ensure that these works are protected because there are a lot of uh, investment can be placed whether financial or material investment to ensure that you come up with a music or, or to produce a movie and to write a book so in order to protect and encourage the continual uh, production of movies, music, and literary work, be it uh, novels and other books, is to ensure that on a copyright protection, you have a stronger, a very stronger protection on a copyright. 
So similar to visual arts, uh, music, movies, and literary works also have protection on the copyright. And basically the, the, the protection there is to ensure that others cannot infringe on your right after making all these investment, uh, financial investment and material investment in producing a specific act work that someone would just uh, infringe on your right and go without any uh, punitive measures. So if an individual infringe on your right, your movies right, uh, your paintings, uh, say your sculpture, your films, your engravings, or if you have, if you work at, as an artist within a public museum, or if you have a private gallery, all your artistic work will be protected on copyright. And you as an artist or to firstly engage in registration of these works. You have to register all these work with the appropriate offices, whether an intellectual property office or a specific government uh, uh, bureau where you can register to claim and hold legitimacy to your work. So, Visual arts protection on a copyright focuses specifically on, a, on originality. In order to be granted protection on a copyright for whatsoever visual arts you are engaged in, you have to demonstrate at what uh, whatsoever intellectual property office or government bureau that you are going to register your uh, visual arts, you have to demonstrate that these works are original and you are the original author of that work or service. So you need to demonstrate originality for whatsoever visual art work you are engaged in. So in general, uh, copyright can be used to maximize profit out of artistic work. What that means is if you have, take for example, you are the one that, uh, <laughs> just for example, because we all know who uh, produced the Mona Lisa, the painting of the Mona Lisa. But take for example, you are the individual that did that work. In general, in order, uh, copyright gives you the protection as the original artist that produced the Mona Lisa, that if you want to sell such a work, and I just, I just did a brief research that the Mona Lisa is worth some, the original Mona Lisa work is worth somewhere around eight to nine hundred million United States dollars. You can, you can check it out. So almost a billion dollar worth of artistic work, the Mona Lisa. So with copyright protection, you can maximize the profit from an original work. Uh, so it's Aside from ensuring that you can demonstrate originality of the work, you can move to the respective or appropriate uh, intellectual property office or copyright office to register said work. Copyright protection ensures that you can maximize the profits and the economic dividend after you have invested a lot of time, financial, and material in a specific visual artwork you have made. Be it a painting, uh, an example of the Mona Lisa that is worth closely to a billion dollars, 
copyright ensure that that artwork is protected and sure in case you have some uh, economic uh, dividends from that work, copyright maximize the economic return on such artistic work. And then this is obviously good uh, for the artists and ec economically. Generally, if copyright protection can ensure that you maximize uh, financially from whatsoever artworks you are engaged in, be it a sculpture, I know, like I noted that in my bound point, there's a specific uh, Art and craft center around Mamban Point, where foreigners, or those visiting Monrovia, can converge at to see these art and craft works and to purchase them to treat, uh, uh, display them or in their respective homes, offices, and wherever they would like to place them. There's a market for that. And copyright protection ensures that those artists that are engaged in art and craft, if they are registered and if they have legitimacy over these works can be protected. Copyright serves as a motivator, an, in an incentivizer to motivate artists to continue to produce more artworks and if they are engaged economically in these activities, uh, the, the financial benefit can be maximized. So that is the intent of copyright protection. And this have a, a triple effect on the artists, uh, government can in return gain more taxes on these artistic, artistic work if they are registered with the government and generally on the flow of the economy on a specific uh, given economy where these uh, artworks are taking place where they are being sold where there's a demand on the market for these uh, visual arts works so it's a, it's a broad benefit to the general society, economic-wise, uh, government taxes, and the artists accruing uh, resources uh, on, as a return on his or her investment in creating such artworks. So a typical example, like I said, could be a public uh, exhibition of Paintings, uh, you have, you are, you are an artist endowed with artistic skills and you did several paintings and you organize an exhibition of these paintings and uh, your visitors, your guests and those in the artistic market that have interest in this work can come to visit, they can buy some of your artworks, they can have uh, sponsorship deals with you, they can contract you for maybe additional artwork if the other companies are interested in maybe mass production of these works and through your authorization as the original author of the work, you can sign a contract, you can make a determination on how to sell your products. So uh, at, from the level of the artist, the artist benefit, the government benefit, and the general economy benefit, and even the sellers, those that have uh, uh, access to your artworks to purchase them to take them out of the country whether for personal use or for commercial use all that is is an economically viable as well as a socially viable activity to engage in so visual arts and copyright protection are very critical for the advancement of any given society uh, uh, Liberia, 
a typical example. Uh, so in the in the effort of uh, of visual arts protection on a copyright, there have been some uh, varieties of debates arguments be made. But well, one critical argument I want to share with you is from a New York professor by the name of Amy Ada from the New York University, the NYU. So this professor argues that copyright is not important for visual art, especially uh, those visual arts uh, that are that entails that entails form of visual art that entails the original copy that speaks to the original copy or the first copy of said original uh, product and she argues that if that original copy the very first copy of that painting, be it the Mona Lisa, uh, be it the Picasso. Her argument is that the original painting of the Mona Lisa or the Picasso is a very uh, pretty and a real, a pretty real piece. There's only one original Mona Lisa. There's only one original Picasso. And so because of that uniqueness, that uh, realness, realness of that, of the Mona Lisa and the Picasso, because of that uniqueness, copyright protection is not, her argument is that copyright protection is not really needed for visual arts except for uh, commercial graffiti designs, artworks that are often unique. So, so her argument is because uh, of the uniqueness of visual arts works, because of the originality of visual art works. And if you can identify that the Picasso or the Mona Lisa paintings are the original paintings. Then, based on that determination that these two paintings are original, the authentic nature of these two paintings must be the determination on why they should be protected and should not be copyrighted which is a very extreme, you know, a very extreme argument, a very provocative argument in a sense. But this is the argument the NYU uh, professor made, Amy Ada. So her argument is that based on the originality, based on the authenticity of these visual artworks, it bears weight for this originality and authenticity in nature alone to protect the artwork and not it be protected by copyright. So this, your work is already original. You are the original owner of the Mona Lisa. So you don't need copyright protection since you are the original owner and you have met certain requirements that are laid out that this artwork is original. So just based on that requirement you met, then your artwork should be protected based on that requirement and not copyright protection, which is the extreme case because there are many loopholes. Uh, someone may argue there are many loopholes that if your artwork is not protected by copyright, uh, others could find ways and means to undermine the originality of your work. But this is her argument. And she said that, for example, like we said, the Picasso 
the Mona Lisa, the Basquiat, all these original paintings, all these well-known paintings. Uh, our argument is that these paintings cannot be fake. You will easily tell the fake uh, Picasso, you easily tell the fake Mona Lisa and the fake Basquiat painting as opposed to the original. So that is the argument uh, Professor Amy Ad made. So there are arguments and counter arguments on the claim of copyright protection for visual arts. So the original painting is what is important, not the copies. That's the argument she's making. The original painting is important and not the copies, not the copy of the Mona Lisa. The copies of the Mona Lisa, the copies of the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France, uh, the copies of the Picasso, all these artistic uh, work should place emphasis on the original and not the copy. The significance of the original is quite evident and is protected by the use of authenticity. So the use of authenticity, which is what attracts economic value, based on the originality of the work, based on how authentic that work is, is what attracts economic value to be a painting, uh, be a uh, act and craft work, be it a sculpture, be it artworks in a museum, an artwork in a gallery, an exhibition, wherever, that artwork is the originality and the authenticity of that work alone attracts economic value. So we should negate the fact there are fake, there are duplicate copies, but we should place emphasis on the originality of the work. So without a certification of authenticity, the commercial value of an artwork will be significantly diminished. So this is a furtherance of her argument. Without the authenticity of, if you cannot uh, authenticate that whatsoever visual artworks is the original and you have no certification be it by an artistic uh, body that certify you or through the government uh, office that you have been certificated that this is the original work without that certification without that that stamp of originality, it significantly uh, diminishes the value, the originality, and the significance of what uh, work you are engaged in. So there should be a, a stamp of approval from the art, a general artistic body, those engage in that sector of visual arts or through a government body or government office or government authority that grant you that same mark of originality and authenticity in order for you to be given the recognition as the original author or the original artist of a specific painting or artwork. So without that stamp mark, without that approval, without that certification of the work being authentic and original, it significantly diminishes 
the, 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 the relevance of said work. So we need to take that into consideration uh, when we are assessing specific artworks. Uh, whether the Picasso, whether the Mona Lisa, or the Basquiat paintings. So copyright is key in the protection, in the in incentivizing artists to produce more uh, artworks or engage in more visual arts. However, copyright can also be used or can also serve as an obstacle to creativity. What does that mean? Copyright can serve as an obstacle to creativity or an obstacle to virtual arts. So for example, uh, downstream creations could be discouraged in certain, on a second, uh, certain circumstances uh, downstream creation could be discouraged. Uh, and what this means is that through appropriation of art or true pop art, downstream creation could be discouraged under copyright protection. So what this means in plain terms is that if you are the original author of, going back to our regular example, the Mona Lisa painting, and you have a copyright protection on the Mona Lisa painting, which is, which is quite obvious, that the original copy of the Mona Lisa is protected by copyright law. So if it is protected on a copyright, then anyone uh, wanting to use appropriation to make another version, uh, a different image, uh, a certain transformation from the original work to a true appropriation to a downstream work of the Mona Lisa will be in violation of copyright infringement. So in certain instances, when uh, an artwork is protected by copyright to make another version, to, to, to transform that original artwork to another version, to another image, to another structure, to another design, and you want to use a appropriation, in certain instances, you can be in violation of copyright protection. You can, and if the original painter or artist pursue a case, a, a, a litigate against you, you can fall uh, you can fall on a copyright infringement and be penalized for that. So in this case, or under this, on the under these specific circumstances, copyright infringement, uh, copyright protection, then serve as an obstacle to creativity of virtual arts. So this is the point. So there are two issues we need to look at. Uh, appropriation acts. When we say appropriation acts, what are we referring to? So, like the original example, Mona Lisa is the original work. You did the original work of Mona Lisa, the original painting. You are the author, you are the artist, you are the original owner of the Mona Lisa work. However, another artist maybe is intrigued by your work, uh, is moved by your work, and want to do a, 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 a little transformation of your work from the original, and maybe want to spice it up or, 
uh, with, with a new version or, or transformation of the original work. That is what we call appropriation. To appropriate is to, in, in the context of visual arts, copyrights and intellectual property protection, appropriation means that you are changing the original work, which is the upstream work. You want to transform it to another version, which would then become the downstream work. So the upstream work is the original work, and the downstream work is a new version of the original work in another form. Maybe it could be through sculpture, it could be through art and craft, but it's not the original. It's the downstream that have been transformed to another design, another, uh, another set of artistic work that falls on appropriation. So this is it, this is it. It could be pop art, uh, depending on the, 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 the category of artistic work that you are dealing with. So appropriation of objects and images and other arts created by someone else. If you use someone else's original work, maybe for a comical display or a educational display, but the new version of that work is a downstream, is what we refer to as a downstream work because it's not the original. It has been appropriated. So this is the argument that copyright protection can sometimes serve as an obstacle to visual arts because using the, the someone else's original work to create new artwork is also creativity. Uh, you are being inventive. Uh, you look at the Picasso original work and you made a new version of the Picasso who is also uh, attractive or is appreciated by the art. You know, people would like to see it. People, or, although people are intrigued by the original work of the Picasso, but they, they are also intrigued by the, a transformation of the Picasso to another design, another sculpture. And so it's a level of artistic work that is being produced. But the argument is and remains that copyright protection can serve as can serve as obstacle to, to other visual arts and creativity. So that's the argument. So in other instances, copyright protection can serve as an obstacle or an impediment. So copyright protection can, in some instances, not all instances, but in some instances, uh, be an obstacle to accessing, to using, and to disseminating copyrighted works because these works are protected on a copyright so in for you to use that work with all without the authorization of the original author you are in infringement of the work so that's the the emphasis we are we try to place on copyright protection being an obstacle to downstream work and appropriated works. <clears throat> so the, like I said, the upstream creation is the original visual arts work that can be used to create the downstream creation or downstream work through what appropriation. And in some instances, uh, appropriation are uh, disallowed on a copyright protection 
all can be considered as an infringement on copyright protection. Uh, so some example of visual art works, like we said, paintings, uh, geographical maps. So if you have a map, a geographical map of Liberia and the, 50, the, the 43,000 square miles of Liberia covering the 15 counties, the geopolitical subdivisions of Liberia, uh, and you have all this in a geographical map, those geographical maps can be protected on copyright. Sculptures can be protected, statues, architectural works. If you are an architect and if you have a specific drawings and uh, maybe you work with a company that own those architectural drawings or you as an, uh, an, an engineer or an architect, an architect uh, duly register with the government or the appropriate body can seek copyright protection for your architectural uh, drawings of maybe buildings, maybe bridges, uh, waterways or what's your architectural work you are engaged in can be protected on a copyright. So moving forward, we would like to emphasize that artistic merit is however not relevant uh, when it comes to copyright protection. So what that means is that uh, in order to determine what uh, what, what that in order to make a determination that a work, a specific visual art works, uh, meets the requirement for artistic merit, cannot be based on how the art, the artworks look. Uh, in your eye uh, as an ordinary individual that have no artistic background or skill set or experience, you as an ordinary individual, you may see a specific work and make a determination that the work in your view is awful, is ugly, is a disgusting painting, is a disgusting visual artwork, uh, it's a disgusting sculpture or statue. It doesn't look pleasing to your eye, but you, we cannot make, you are not in a position to make the determination that because of work look uh, ugly, uh, look awful, disgusting, because a statue looks uh, disgusting to you, uh, because a specific painting look uh, very uh, scary or unattractive to you cannot be the basis for determining that this, uh, determining the artistic merits of that painting. So artistic merit is however not relevant when it comes to copyright protection. A work can seems to be awful, it can seems to be ugly, disgusting to, to, to an individual, but can still be protected on a copyright. And this is very important to note because uh, in, in cases, in cases or in case law, uh, judges, uh, lawyers, uh, those working within the perimeters of the court, uh, we want to ensure that uh, the decisions that are decisions that are made or decisions that affect uh, visual arts or other artistic work is not based on the understanding of the individuals within the 
very meters of the court, what are lawyers, judges, they cannot use their personal judgment to make a determination. All works uh, that meet the requirement of artistic merit are protected on a copyright protection. So lawyers, judges, and those working in the court cannot make uh, cannot be the determinant or determiner or the arbiter to judge whether or, uh, or an artwork meets the artistic merit. And this have been, there are precedents that have been set uh, specifically a century ago in the U.S. Uh, in the U.S. Yeah. court or uh, in a commercial case, a case of advertising a century ago, a determination was made by the court that a judge or lawyer or those working in the court cannot be, are not in a position to make judgment on a specific artistic work uh, based on their understanding, but rather on on their artistic understanding of the work, but rather on the provision of the copyright law that provides a blanket coverage for all those categories of works that meet the requirement of art, visual arts. All these works that fall on visual arts uh, be it paintings, be it sculpture, be it art work within a museum or a gallery, this work may not be to your pleasing or the pleasing of your eye, but they meet the artistic merit as provided by copyright protection. So arts created in the context of advertising, the court argues that those that there will be, it, it, it was going to be a very dangerous precedent or dangerous undertaking for a person trained only in law, be it judges or lawyer, to be the founder judges of the work, of artistic work, of visual arts works. The value of artistic work they cannot be, the judges and the lawyers cannot be the arbiter to determine whether the final value of the work or they, they cannot make that decision that a specific work falls, falls with, within the merit of artistic nature. So judges cannot be the arbiters of artistic merits. That's the emphasis that was being made during that period. So to move on, the artistic merit of a work is not determined by those working within the Abit, the ambit of the court, or rather, all artistic work are protected on a copyright. So even an ugly painting is protected, but an artistic purpose is necessary. So what is an artistic purpose? An artistic purpose is what a visual art work should meet. So the determination that should be made what whether uh, an artwork meets the requirement for for copyright protection is based on the purpose of the artistic work. What is the purpose? What is the intent of this artistic work? So for a typical, a typical example, a single brick or block 
on display at a museum or at an, a, a gallery for two weeks. This is a break, uh, a regular break or what in Liberia we generally, we generally refer to as a block. And this block is on display at the museum or at a gallery for two weeks. Because of that, our determination can be made that this block is clearly capable of being a structure that so because of where it will uh, it was it was displayed at a museum or at a gallery so that's the the the, the, the that is what we need to take is an ordinary block is on display at where at a museum or at a gallery that seem that identical block or brick when taken at a construction site for two weeks is not an artistic work. So this is the example. We want to make a determination on the artistic purpose of the work and a visual work or an artistic work in general. What is the purpose of the work? So you take, for example, a regular block of brick that we use to build buildings, bridges, and what whatever construction work you are engaged in. You take this identical brick. As an artist, you might have some artistic effort that you have made with that brick. Maybe you painted it, you made some design of that work, and you place it in a museum or you place it as part of your gallery, your exhibition within your gallery. That brick was displayed for two weeks. People visited your gallery or your museum and they saw, saw the bricks on display. And so the intent of you displaying that brick at the gallery or the museum as an artist and the effort you place in painting that brick to make it appear appeasing to the eye of your visitors or your guests at your gallery or at the museum. That is the purpose, the artistic purpose we want to stress. So you cannot apply that similar uh, that similar in that similar v apply it to this the block being placed at a construction site for two weeks on the streets and that block is intended to build a bridge so the 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 the, the, the artistic purpose is not similar the artistic purpose of a block display in a museum or a gallery painted design in a way to attract a visitor's attention to seeing that block is quite different from a block at a construction site that is it, that will be eventually used to build a bridge or a building. So this is where we need to draw the dichotomy between the artistic purpose of a block at a museum displayed by an artist for visitors, for those interested in the artistic work, display at a gallery exhibition for those invited and interested in the artistic work and meeting the artistic 
purpose of that work as compared to a brick display uh, uh, placed or kept at a construction site for two weeks to build a bridge or a building. So that is where the dichotomy need to be uh, placed on the artistic purpose of a work. So because of the purpose, like I said, because of the purpose of the brick at the construction site is also to build a bridge or a building or a house whatsoever, the judge in that identical case uh, that we are discussing or, or judge within a business code or an intellectual property code or a copyright code can make can make a determination on the difference on artistic purpose. So a determination on whether this <laughs> brick or block is, uh, uh, is an artistic work or uh, whether it is not an artistic work, whether it's an artistic work or not can be made on the artistic purpose of the work. So, how can we establish artistic purpose? What are the requirements that should be met to establish artistic purpose? So, one, we say the break in the gallery or the museum was created by the hand of an artist. The break in the gallery or the museum was created or painted, decorated, man manipulated by an artist. That's the first requirement. Who did the work? Is it a block that was done by a construction worker or a, a block designed by an artist to attract uh, to appease the eye of bystander or those visiting a museum or a gallery with the intent of seeing artistic work. So, and that's the first requirement on the work being created by an artist and exhibited at an art center and being exhibited at an art center. So the first requirement is that the work should be done by an artist and the location of the exhibition, the exhibition of the work is at an art center, be it a museum or a gallery. So these are the two requirements that should be met to demonstrate at artistic purpose. The first requirement that should be met to demonstrate artistic purpose is that the work should be created by an artist. The second requirement is that the work should be placed on exhibition within an artistic center, museum, gallery, exhibition center but it should be an artistic center so if these two requirements are met their work then meet the artistic purpose necessary so we keep moving we keep going on uh, then make progress and then we say why the brick at the construction site was kept for was kept on the street for the purpose of be erecting a building. So they are they are very separate, uh, separate intent and separate purpose for why these two bricks, uh, one can be considered an artistic work because it meets artistic purpose and the other does it. So moving forward. So, uh, 
furthering, uh, furthering the, the furthering the discussion on copyright law, we say in the UK and other uh, jurisdiction, copyright laws have a specific clause for protectable subject matters. And it, uh, it is not a blanket protection. Copyright protection for visual arts are, are very specific. They, they have a specific in, 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 in some jurisdictions, specifically England and other countries, that within the copyright law, there are specific clauses for particular categories of artworks that copyright protection is provided for. So the uh, copyright protection for artwork is not a blanket protection. Copyright protection for visual arts have specific categories and subject matters that hide cited in certain jurisdiction copyright laws. So to look at a few of these categories, we look at artistic work, one of the categories that must be uh, met or, or for, for, for copyright protection is artistic work. The work should be artistic in nature. The second uh, category has to do with musical work. Musical work have copyright protection, literary work. So books, novels, and all of that uh, literary works, computer generated works. So computer generated work falls on a copyright protection as well within a UK and other jurisdiction around the world. Any work not included is no evolve. So you are if you are within the UK uh you have within the UK uh I should stress copyright protection or intellectual property protection is territorial in nature. So each country has their specific copyright laws and within these countries uh, the, the authority, the establishment of entity to enforce these laws are in place. So the law in Liberia for copyright protection might not be the same applied to copyright protection in the Africans or in Ghana or Nigeria. So copyright enforcement or intellectual property enforcement is territorial in nature. So specifically in the United Kingdom, there are specific clauses within the copyright law that spell out specific subject matters that can be protected by copyright. And these subject matters include artistic work, musical work, literary work, and computer generated works. If you have a, a work, that, a couple uh, uh, artistic work that doesn't fall, or any other work that doesn't fall on these categories, cannot be protected within the United Kingdom and other jurisdiction on copyright protection. So any other work not included are no involved, no involved in that instance. So you must understand the, the, the available laws within specific jurisdiction if you are seeking copyright protection. If you are seeking copyright protection in Liberia and you are seeking copyright protection in the United States or in Europe, you need to understand, uh, basically hire a lawyer because you not being a lawyer will not understand uh, the implication of whatsoever law you read. So you need to hire or consult a lawyer that will 
direct you in the right path to deal with copyright protection with these specific countries. So there is a close list of, of protection. There's a close list of copyright protectable subject matter. So copyright protectable subject matter is not a blanket list. It's a close list that specifies specific uh, uh, works that can be protected. Artistic work, musical work, uh, computer generated work. So moving forward, moving forward, uh, there have been cases uh, where indecisions were made by judges in favor of copyright protectable lists. So if you are engaged in any uh, copyright production or artistic work or musical work or computer generated work or any work that falls within that perimeter of the copyright protectable subject matter and you have a case or maybe someone have a case against you and because you fall within the perimeter of the copyright protectable subject matter in this in this instance or in these cases the judges have a much easier decision to be made since you are within the perimeter of copyright protectable subject matter so that's uh, conclude with uh, the requirements for copyright protection for visual arts. What are the requirements for copyright protection for visual arts? If you are engaged in paintings, if you are engaged in sculptures, if you are engaged in the engravement, uh, if you are engaged in any sort of visual arts work, what are the requirements laid out that you must meet in order to be granted copyright protection? This is the discussion we are going to have on the requirements of copyright protection for visual arts. So the first thing you need to meet is originality. Originality is the first and foremost requirement that you must meet in order to be granted pop, uh, copyright protection for a visual artwork that you are given. Maybe you are engaged in art and craft. You are a sculpture. Uh, you you may be or the sculpt or statue or some uh, some some sort of uh, creative work within sculpturing. Uh, you may be able to do art and craft. You may be able to craft a wooden material that is very attractive and people may buy them and place them in their offices, their homes, and whatsoever, public or private buildings. You must meet originality as a first requirement. So originality is the first requirement that you must meet to ensure that you are given copyright protection for visual arts. So there are, there are, there are, there are, there are several requirements uh, given the jurisdiction that you live in, whether in the United States, the United Kingdom, Europe, Africa, or whatsoever, Asia, whatsoever part of the world and whatever jurisdiction that within a specific country has copyright protection and intellectual property protection is territorial in nature. So we have the info pack for Europe. Uh, the info pack uh, lays out a, a, a basic steps that you must meet in order to meet originality if you are in Europe. Then we have intellectual creation tests of the EU also. So intellectual creation tests, uh, 
AVR within the EU, this is a test that lays out specific requirements that you must meet in order for your work to be declared original work. Then we have the modicum level of creativity test within the US. If you are within the US, in order for the state, uh, the IP office, the copyright office to make a determination that your work is original, it must meet the requirement laid out in the modicum level of creativity test. You must pass that test in the US for your work to be declared an original work. So there are many layers laid down for an artist, an author to meet in order to, for his or her work to be declared an original work. Then lastly, in order for your work to be declared original, you must meet material alteration or embellishment uh, requirement. Your work must, the, 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 the material characteristic of your work should not be altered or embellished. So if your work pass all details, depending on the jurisdiction you are located in, be it the UK, the United States, the European Union, Asia or Africa. If you meet the info part requirement for EU, if you meet the intellectual creation test of EU, which is embedded in the European Union law, if you meet the modicum level of creativity test, creativity test with, with, with in the US, if you meet the material alteration or embellishment uh, requirement and that your work is not materially alterated or embellished, then you can be, you have just met the first requirement that you meet originality. And in most instances, originality is the most difficult requirement to meet. Because for you to be the original author of a work without getting some uh, uh, motivation from an original work, you have to really be innovative or inventive enough to have a, an original work all by yourself, uh, created all by yourself. So if you meet that most difficult first requirement of originality uh, is, is much easier or less difficult to meet the requirement of fixation, which is the second requirement. Uh, but in most jurisdictions, you have to meet the fixation requirement. And what does fixation mean from an artistic uh, point of view or copyright or uh, visual arts? Point of view. So, so if your work is fixated, it has certain level of attachment to the, its artistic nature. It's fixed in nature. It's fixated. So, in order to, if you meet the first requirement of originality and you meet the fixation requirement uh, that is applied in, in some jurisdiction, not all jurisdictions have the fixation requirement, but in some jurisdiction, the fixation requirement exists. And if you meet that second requirement of fixation, then you have the authorship requirement. So authorship uh, you have to be the original uh, author of the work. And if that is established, which is the third requirement, then you move to the fourth requirement of functional exception. Functional exception of the work. Is it functional enough? Is it, does it meet the requirement for 
functional exception. And in further episode, we will expand on all these requirements in depth. Then, having met the functional exception requirement, then you meet the last requirement, which is the fifth requirement of dichotomy idea express. The dichotomy of the idea express. The ideas expressed in your work. Does it uh, fit within a specific dichotomy? of the ideas expressed, the ideas expressed, the concept of ideas expressed. Does your work meet that last requirement? But this uh, dichotomy of ideas expressed, the functional exception, authorship requirement, fixation requirement, these four requirements are less uh, difficult to meet once you meet the originality requirement. So these are the five requirements in order for your visual artworks to be granted copyright. In order to proceed to the intellectual property office, uh, the Bureau set aside for copyright uh, registration and uh, uh, copyright registration within specific jurisdiction like Bureau, United States, UK, Europe, uh, parts of Africa, Asia, depending on the jurisdiction you are engaged uh, in this artistic work. The requirements, the general requirement, most of the jurisdiction, uh, except the, the exception of fixation requirement, originality requirement, authorship, functional exception, dichotomy of ideas expressed of these requirements are, are broadly applied across several jurisdictions. But with certain jurisdictions, the fixation requirement is not applied. So these are, this is just a brief uh, introduction into virtual arts and copyright protection for virtual arts. The Mona Lisa, the Picasso, the Basquiat paintings, these are all globally and well-known paintings we are all familiar with. How are they protected on a copyright protection? How is uh, the authentic authenticity certification granted to them? How, are the, how is the originality determined for artistic work? So these are all issues that we were discussing for visual arts protection. And lastly, before I close, I would like to stress that uh, for visual arts protection, uh, our conscious decisions of creating artistic purpose must be made. If you are engaged or you're going to engage in visual arts uh, production or creation, you must consciously express through the creation or the production of that art artwork that you have made a conscious decision of creating the work with an artistic purpose and the artistic purpose could be to meet the two requirements of it being created by an artist to attract uh, to attract attention from viewers from would be buyers or corporations and the second requirement is that it should be displayed or exhibited at an artistic center, a museum, a gallery, or an exhibition center. So these are the pur artistic purpose requirements that must be what? It must be created. The work must be created or produced by the hands of an artist. And the work must be displayed within the confinement of an artistic center or museum or gallery or, or art exhibition center. That is the point. And lastly, 
works can be protected. Uh, take for instance a photograph. Uh, a photograph could be protected. A building of a uh, architectural work could be protected based on several uh, several several elements and indicators that should be met. So for example, the anchor of the photograph, how the photo is positioned, the angles, the choice of the angles that the photographer may use to take that identical picture, the choice of the lettings, what type of light? Is it the, is the light bright? Is the light blue? Is it dim? How is the lighting of that identical photograph? Uh, how is the element of lighting involved in the identical photograph? A creative effort made by the photographer or the artist. So what is the creative effort apart from the, the choice of the lettings and the choice of the angle of a specific photo, be it architectural, be it social, or a or, 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 or photo shoot, for a typical example could be a photo shoot. What are the lettings within that specific uh, photo shoot uh, 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 design room? So what is the artistic effort that will apply by the photographer or the artist? Uh, what is the background, the background and other creative decision uh, that give rise to copyright protection? So these are all issues, these are all elements and indicators within an artistic work that give rise to copyright protection. The choices of angles within uh, uh, a camera or uh, the photographer uh, choices of angle, the, the photograph choices of letting, the efforts that the photograph or the artist is, is applying to get that work done, the background of the work, all these give rise to trigger the copyright protection of said work. So this is what I wanted to share with you guys today for our episode on visual arts and copyright protection. Uh, we look forward to our next episode uh, uh, the following weekend. We look forward to your continued support. To continue to support the Intellectual Property and Trade Nexus podcast. I'm your host, your IP and trade guy, Tom Tombeka. I'm looking forward to see you next time. This is the episode on visual arts and copyright protection. Visual arts that are globally recognized are paintings such as the Picasso, the well-known uh, Mona Lisa painting, the Bastia paintings, uh, the sculptures, the statues, the art and craft works that we normally in Africa have. A uh, uh, typical example for Monrovia, the arts and craft center all around the city that uh, specifically are pointed out to the one in Mamban Point uh, opposite the ho hotel forgotten the name of the specific hotel, but that art center is well known and mostly visitors go there, tourists go there, Liberians alike go there and buy art and craft works. And it's a very uh, lucrative market for, for Liberians alike. And lastly, before leaving, I want to share uh, artistic work, specifically visual arts work, has uh, multiples of uh, benefits and dividends for a society in general, the economy, the artists, and those engaged in uh, the purchase of said work. So it's a very uh, lucrative fee to go in. And if 
and uh, a lucrative fee to engage him and as well to support as a government and people we need to invest in our artists we need to invest in our art and crafters we need to invest in those in the artistic and visual arts industry be it uh, films uh, which is an opposite art from artistic work be it filming and music production we need to make more investment especially tourism tourism is a great sector to invest in and by extension the musical industry the film industry the art and craft industry of liberia so thank you for having me uh we look forward to seeing our next episode bye Bye, 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 bye. See you next time. See you soon. See you next time.